Hi, everyone. I'm Stephen W. Long. This is The Writing Life. Uh, my guest today is Tomas Garza, and uh, I think we're going to learn some things today. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe calm us down a little bit. So welcome first. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, I told you before we started, I went to your website and, and got a, a little information. But yes. um, so your, your book is Decide. And give us the elevator speech on that. Decide is a book about our limiting stories, the okay. stories that people tell themselves to get in their own way and justify inaction, block transformation, little things that seem little at the time, such as, oh, it's just not for me, or the group's already started, I am going to sit this one out, mm -hmm. I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too athletic, I'm not athletic enough. Right. right. Let's, lots of little excuses, and I had just a lot of energy around that last year when I was teaching meditation okay. and heard all kinds of things, and I realized that it would be valuable for people to have a manual of sorts, a, just a list of these stories and things that they could choose to believe instead, okay. some practical information so that they could, number one, recognize when they were saying these things to themselves and learn ways to work around it that okay. can be done moment to moment that don't take uh, necessarily a lot of money or a lot of time. And okay. that was the genesis of the book. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, I know, and this, I'm trying to tie this together. You are, were an, an adjunct professor. I, I, and, were, I was. Yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. is that kind of part of this or, did, or or was that experience that you're talking about was a separate thing? It was separate in time however the subject matter relates directly right. this was an adjunct professorship at Portland State okay. in conflict resolution and okay. I did that for eight years from 2005 to 2013 okay. and I saw a lot of this from my students, but during that time I was also a practitioner of family mediation. I had a private mediation practice okay. and I did that for about 13 years. And that is full, chock full every session, <laughs> as you might imagine, every yeah. session, every hour of every day, chock right. full of limitations, justifications for limitations. And it, it's, it's always hard in that context because these are really, really good people that find themselves in a difficult situation. Right. Now, in terms of subject matter, everything has continually blended and led up to the point where I thought, I really need to write this book. Yeah. Well, I can sure see that, how the, the accumulation of, of these experiences uh, mm -hmm. would culminate in, in that. This right. may be off topic, but it interests me. So okay. uh, in, in the conflict, the, the cause of the conflict, do you think that that is at least sometimes a result of telling ourselves these stories? Yes. Okay. I, I think that it is because this is a pervasive psychological experience. I think that all human beings have, and we begin to tell ourselves these stories in childhood. Sure. Because as we were talking about before the show about parenting, right. we absorb messages from society, from our parents, all of the time. And while people may be doing their best, they may be even unconsciously, not just subconsciously, but unconsciously, in instilling limiting stories, limiting messages to their kids, and as a parent myself, I'd like to think I've never done that, but the reality is we all instill those. I was going to say it's probably impossible. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, again, before we started recording, we are talking about uh, conscious parenting, right. and I came from a generation, at least for me, I, didn't, I wasn't conscious of that, because I think I wasn't raised like that. I, we, we, as I said, I knew I was loved, I was protected, right. we were cared for physically uh, and supported. But, sure. uh, but I think uh, uh, typical to the time my dad worked, my mom stayed home, and, and, and I, as much as anything, I just grew up as, as and this isn't a, uh, a criticism, but I think my siblings and I just grew up rather than being raised. Having said that, I think I got exactly what you're talking about. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, uh, limiting yes. uh, or 
that may be the opposite, may be encouraging. Mm -hmm. I think that everybody gets a little bit of both. There sure, are well, maybe some <laughs> extreme yeah. examples where right. someone has a, a really, really skewed experience one way or another, but sure. I really first became conscious that these were limiting stories as I got older and as I started to tell myself mm -hmm. the same thing over and over again and recognized this is a message that I received from my family, okay. this is a message that I received from society, and I'm stuck in this line of work. For example, I'm stuck in this job, I'm stuck in a relationship, could be anything for okay. anyone, but I recognized a lot of these in myself. So the stories that made it into the book are stories that I've heard in various walks of life from my students, from clients, and right. I have told myself every single one of these sure. without a doubt. And I wonder if you are exceptional in the sense that you came to this on your own. Or maybe let me rephrase that. Would most people need some guidance? I honestly think that we all need some guidance. Okay. I, I really do. I feel like the journey never never ends and at every Let's point hope. along <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. yes exactly at any point along the way we might be ready for the next level of growth sure. the next level of transformation and it's as though we learn lessons that we need to learn during a period of time during a season of our lives okay. and at that point we're ready to take the next step and i have, i've never met a person that didn't need guidance to be honest, uh, however, I'm not sure what that form person that exists. Takes. Yeah, right. So, um, uh, well, as you were saying that, I, I thought of the the cliche: uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yes, and, and so maybe that maybe these are the stages that we w when we're ready. In fact, yes. I can't remember if I said it on camera or off, but uh, 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 when I knew better, I did better. Mm. So maybe that's right. part of it. Yeah. I agree. I, th I think it is. And I, I think that when the student is ready, the teacher appears is, right. in my experience, 100% right. true. When someone's <laughs> ready for the next level of transformation, of growth, whatever they want to call it, then the opportunities will begin to show up okay. in their lives. And it's and up maybe to it's them. because you're open to that. Yes. And yeah. it's up to the person as to whether they choose to see it, choose to recognize it, and then whether they choose to act on right. it is completely their act of will, their choice, conscious sure. choice. Uh, I, I can think of people that I've met in my life, and you probably have twice as many, that uh, you choose not to. Yes. That there's, re there's really just no growth. Right. Yeah. And people do seem stuck. They seem stuck all of the time. Yeah. And there's really nothing that we can do about it because it's all a matter of their choosing mm -hmm. to get themselves unstuck, whatever that actually mm -hmm. looks like. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Tomas, I was thinking about, uh, and this is not I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not setting you up, but just let me say <laughs> it this way. You, because you do this professionally as well. I mean, you counsel, I think. Am I, am I right that you? I, I, I used to. Okay. I, I do a little bit of coaching these days, coaching. but I'm no longer okay. a mediator. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I was thinking was, and this may not even be true, but there's a sort of a cliche, that the best marriage counselors have been divorced. Or, <laughs> or you know, and you can set it up like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair, I think you're saying this as well, that you told yourself stories. Yes. And, and, and believed them, and maybe they were limiting. Mm -hmm. And so now, having gone through that, it's in some sense the sun has come out, you can see, and, and you can then guide other people. Correct. Because you've been through it, is what I'm saying. Yes, correct. And not only that, I would also take it to the next level. It's my responsibility, as I see it, okay. to guide people. And you're absolutely correct. Having had the experience, mm -hmm. it, makes, um, it makes for a better relationship with the person that you're trying to work with. I, I in fact, went through a divorce while I was in okay. divorce and child custody mediation, and that did a couple, had a couple of impacts on me. Number one, it really helped me to be able to relate to what the people in the room were going through. And also, it hastened the end of mediation because the emotions seemed that much more raw oh, to boy. me. Yeah. 
So uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I no longer engage in that okay. as a profession. Okay. I, uh, again, forgive me, or folks out here, forgive me. I was thinking I was raised Catholic, uh -huh. and uh, uh, there was such a controversy about birth control. No. And, and one, of the, one of the things you'd hear is, uh, don't, don't let the people who've never played the game set the rules. So okay. that, then there, there might be something to that as yes, well. Yes, I think there is. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's true because yeah. we, we, we all are responsible for our own experience, and we can choose not to say, see it that way. We can choose not to yeah. believe that, but ultimately we have conscious choices to make right. all the time. Do you think that it's possible to be completely objective about yourself? In other words, not tell yourself stories. How do we look at ourselves? Is that I, think it, I think it really varies. Okay. I can just think in my own experience, every moment of every day, in, in a 24-hour period, if we look at it, there are many moments where we're at a higher vibrational frequency where we're seeing ourselves at a higher level and then the critical voice still comes in where I think, oh gosh, I, you know, I need to lose X amount of, of pounds, I need to lose weight, I'm not good enough, the stories keep coming back in and they will find a way and it's our job to not allow them to take over and run the experience because whatever thoughts that uh, we give our attention to, that becomes what we experience. And this is, okay. this is my experience yeah. that if I see myself as, as loving, if I see myself as valuable with a gift to give the world, then I find myself feeling better, I find myself happier, uh, feeling much more confident and okay. able to go out and be the person that I'm capable of being on okay. that day. And I think you know, we all have to do our best on a given day. Is, is that, if I use the word visualization, is that valid? In other Always. words, you, you mm -hmm. see something and then it comes into being because you've already imagined it. In my experience, that has happened, yeah. and people have all kinds of different ways of talking about that. Right. Um, there are all sorts of topics out there and, and workshops about manifestation. People talk about all of these things, and, and the reality is if we focus our attention on a, a thought or a feeling, it tends to show up in our experience. Okay. Our minds are, are that powerful. If we walk down the street, for example, with a smile on our face and sure. we say hello, good morning to everybody, then we're much more likely to get that energy in return, yeah. whereas if we go off scowling at people, throwing things and, and right. shouting profanity, right. then we're likely to get that back or at best people will want to avoid us. Sure. Yeah. So to, uh, to some extent is that it's, it's self-fulfilling? It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. Okay. You. And I, and I hope I say this right, but uh, you said, I encourage you to get radical, put your own mask on first. Are, t t talk about that. Are okay. those two different things? Or, yeah, okay. I, I love it. I'm glad you mentioned okay, that because sure. there's been a lot of energy around that uh, for me in okay. the last few months. What I mean by put your own mask on first, of course, people will recognize if they've been on a plane. I lately. wondered about that. I didn't know if it was a mask to hide us or to help us. You know? No, by that I mean the, the, the oxygen right. mask. And, and what I mean by put your own mask on first, like a flight attendant would right. advise you on, a, on, on an airplane, right. is that people need us to be our best. I used to say this when I was going um, and doing mediation because I also taught parent education yeah. classes to uh, the same people that would go on to become my clients in many cases right. in mediation. And, and I, I would tell them that your kids need you at your best, whatever that looks like in the moment. Right. And uh, of course, they were all going through a painful, sometimes prolonged experience. Yeah. but. Everyone needs us to be at our best. Our, if we have children, our children need us to be at our best. Our spouses, our partners, right. our colleagues, everyone that we come into contact with needs us to be our best on a given day. Whatever we're capable of, 
that day. And in order to be able to have something to give to the world, we have to not neglect ourself. In other right. words, we have to put our own mask on first, then assist others. Because if you pass out at 35,000 feet, then You're nobody's going to help your kids. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's a, uh, you know, again, I think of, of some things in my own life <clears throat> where uh, somebody will, uh, with the most generous heart, give and give and give right. to the point that they're no longer their best. Yes. And, and, and that's a tough one. To, well, how do you <clears throat> identify that and then pull back? And This is maybe mm -hmm. rhetorical. Maybe, maybe there isn't an answer. But I'm just thinking about people I know that have done that right. with the best intentions. Sure. But at some point, it's not helping anybody. I, I, I know people like yeah. that. I think we all do. Sure. I think we all do. And I, I think that there are so many different ways that people can uh, take in the, the message that I'm, I'm worth it, that I, I need to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. and. Plenty of people do that as a way of avoiding personal growth, which is for a lot of people, the giving, giving, giving is a way of avoiding something internal. That's insightful. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I think <clears throat> um, somebody can maybe, this is part of this whole thing, uh, be wrapped up in some drama that's, yes. and, and, and then that becomes the definition. That's kind of who you are. It's, right. And, yes. And, and almost to the point, or it could be to the point, um, eliciting some kind of sympathy or, oh, poor you, or yes. oh, look, <laughs> look, look how generous you are, and when in fact it's a place to go hide. Right. Yeah. There are many ways to hide. People don't yeah. have to bar the door <laughs> and, and right. turn, off, turn off all the lights and go physically hide, right. though some people do. But that's, that's one way of hiding, and then there are many masks, and there are many ways that we get in our own way. So in my, my experience, teaching people and just stepping up and stepping out there as a guide, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, is the more information people can have, the more different takes on it they can have, the better. And I think that's one of the reasons why we see so many personal growth books and seminars and, and retreats right. is people need this information, yet they will resonate with a certain messenger, a certain okay. artist, a certain writer, teacher. Or yes, right, more than, yeah. a, more than another. So I think we all owe yeah. it to everybody to keep putting it out there if we okay. have something to give. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we had a guest here <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, uh, Laurieanne Hamilton. Yes. And I, so you know her. I do. Mm -hmm. And her book, and which I have, and in fact I'm, I'm reading and enjoying very much, is almost sort of bite-sized. Uh, right. <clears throat> it's not something that you just read through, or I, I am not doing that. Uh -huh. a, a, a couple of pages a night, a couple of nuggets. Sure. Uh, along with some great uh, uh, artwork. Right. But, uh, <clears throat> it, so... Do you think that your two books are similar? That's one thing. And what's the format or what's the presentation okay. of your book? My book contains no artwork besides okay. the cover okay. <laughs> that we see Which here. Which is nice. But, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. I think they did a wonderful job yeah. on that. I did not do that cover, but okay. I, I think it fits. The, the image of the, the bird breaking the chain, so to right. speak, breaking free is what we were going for, that sure. transformational angle. Lorian's book is, is full of, of art and, and splashes of color, right. and mine's completely just print, just words, right. black and white. Sure. And people could choose to take this book and read it straight through like a novel if they wanted to. However, it's 408 pages okay. and <laughs> 60,000 words, yeah. and that's edited uh, several times. Right. <laughs> I, I cut out quite a bit in the uh, editing process, but people can take it a chapter at a time, and I even state toward the beginning of the book, there's a note from the author that you could okay. choose to read it straight through like a novel, or you could peruse the table of contents and take a look at the limiting stories, because there are 15 chapters in the book oh, okay. that are based on a particular variety of limiting story, and people could, if they wanted to, take a look at the table of contents, choose one or two that they recognize in themselves or that they would like help 
working with and right. just use this book as a manual, even for that, even if a person reads one chapter and if uses it pertains. that. Yes. Yeah, right. Precisely. If it pertains to them and they're able to make some constructive changes yeah. and head in a different direction, in a more positive direction, then that would, would be time and money well spent, in my opinion. You, you know, uh, here's a plug for books in general, and, mm -hmm. and we have to be careful <laughs> how, <laughs> how, how far we push on this. All right. But uh, I have said that I don't know that there's a better bargain than a book. Mm. And, and uh, you know, to make up some numbers, kind of, if a book is $20, right. look at what you get. Uh, you don't wear it out. Right. You, you, can, you can read it again and again. You can yes. share it. You can come back to it. And now compare that to a greeting card at mm -hmm. $5. You know, what do you, what do you physically get? Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> right. So anyway, go buy books, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I yeah. agree completely. Yeah. I agree completely. And the greeting card is often written by someone else. There, there are, I mean, there are blank ones where people oh, can sure. write their own sure. message. But yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I was, I was thinking of something written by somebody else. I think it's, to me, it's, it's obviously more personal if you, if yes. it's just a way to convey that, that uh, sentiment. No, oh, right. Yeah, I, I agree. Card. I agree. Okay. So how about uh, uh, encouraged you to get radical? What, talk about that. I like this. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm afraid I could talk about this for three or four hours, so I'll have to get really, really succinct uh, right. for you sure. in the interest of time. Yeah. But uh, by getting radical, what I mean by that is that people like to question things. They like to question things and what I often see is that they stop short of questioning themselves okay. and their limiting beliefs. We're free in today's day and age to tweet whatever we want, right. to go off on social media and, and just really behave badly, sure. very poorly, because we can. Right. And people and like- because we're anonymous, yes. I think, or uh, to absolutely. a large extent. And we are, yeah. more than we used to be, without a doubt. Right. And people are free to criticize society. They're free to criticize other people. And they appear to be very, very questioning. And they don't often wish to turn that inward. Okay. Uh, growth is, is not easy. It, it's hard. Painful, and it can maybe. Be very. <laughs> yeah. It can be very painful yeah. at times. And I encourage people to do that because that is radical. And also, as a society, we eat up the motto, go big or go home. Right. We eat it up for, in the realm of sports. We eat it up from uh, personal growth, from uh, motivational speakers in the realm of business. And why not apply that to our inner lives okay. and get radical. I, I encourage people to shake it up because this is what change and transformation is all about, is shaking it up and it's about getting people to pull themselves out of their comfort zone to the point where they can see what was comfortable and, and familiar to them is not... Is also the good. limiting. It's limiting. Yeah. It's limiting and it's not comfortable. Uh, people have come to me throughout my very careers and uh, as an adult because the comfort zone was not working for them. <laughs> it just wasn't I think working. What it, who, who says that? Dr. Phil, no. how's that working for you? <laughs> right, I love yeah. that. How's that working out for you? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, uh -huh. well good. And in fact, there's another TV doctor, Dr. Oz, and oh, uh, right. I heard him one time, uh, uh, his advice to his kids was, show up for your life. Oh, yeah. okay. And so that's another. I love that. And I'll tell you, uh, not to get too sappy here, but what a what a, a precious gift we have w with this opportunity, with this life. Yes. And then agreed. to squander that would is just awful. It is. I, I think sad. we have an obligation to be our best. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree completely. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Right. <laughs> I, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you mentioned universal sp uh, spirituality. I think I'm on board with that, but what do you have in mind? What I mean is uh, you, there are, no matter what tradition a person was raised in or okay. not, okay. Uh, there are certain core principles that are common to world religions, that are common to spiritual 
groups that are common to practices like yoga okay. that are based in a certain tradition but modernly have branched out and become more all-encompassing. Meditation can be practiced by everyone. People can all work on themselves and learn to extend love to themselves and other people. Put your own mask it's, on first. Yes, <laughs> it's universal. Right. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, well, boy, this is, this could be a deep show here. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do as well. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've heard it explained that whatever you call this entity or this, boy, I'm trying to use the broadest terms. Sure. Um, but that there are many paths. There are. And, and I think pr probably one destination, one, one goal. I, I agree. And, that, yeah. and whether people are comfortable with the term God for that entity or not, right. um, really is it, fine. It's up to them. They can call that whatever they want. Spirit, source, the universe right. is, is a common one. Or a higher power, higher self. There is a destination right. that's common to, to all. And it... it actually transcends the building that we oh, of course. grew up yeah, in, sure. which is a great, it's a great liberating realization sure. for a person when they realize that. And there are so many people that were raised in a particular tradition that may have been fundamentalist or they may have considered it repressive sure. or just didn't suit them that enter adulthood and leave that and go out looking for that something and whatever people wish to call it, it's really right. a personal, right. a personal choice. I, mm -hmm. I wrote an essay one time, and I think it was probably to clarify my own thinking. Uh -huh. but, but I was trying to come up with a word for that entity, oh. and I and I said uh, SRG. I just call it SRG. SRG. SRG is something really great. Oh, okay, <laughs> I love that, it. <laughs> whatever that is. Well, that's great. Yeah. Good. And yeah. so we are kind of uh, getting down to the, the end here, All but right. um, pick your brain a little bit. What, what advice would you leave people with? It, can you, can you uh, other than what we've talked about already, uh, which is to challenge yourself or, or right. question yourself, is there a little nugget that you can leave us with? Well, I would say that I would advise people to dare to question absolutely everything. And I would also suggest and, and encourage people to take it one step at a time. Okay. Uh, they, you don't necessarily acquire the wisdom of a great sage in 15 minutes of, right. of meditation practice. Right. There are many things that people can do moment to moment and that all starts with a decision to do it and that's what I would number one would advise people to pay close attention to is have you actually decided to change hence the For name example. of the book yes right. exactly yeah. right okay now you're going to be at uh, a, a local establishment here boho I am okay yes uh, we, we can we can Plug that. Well, wonderful. I love okay. it. The date is September 22nd, okay. Sunday, from 3 to 5 p.m. And okay. it is a, it's an author event and book signing. The book's been out for about five weeks. So okay. I, I haven't been technically calling it a launch. Yeah. But what I'm going to do is we're going to have a raffle. We're going to have some oh, prizes. Nice. And okay. I'll give a short reading from Decide. And yeah. there will be books, paperback version books available for purchase. Okay. So September 22nd, 3 to 5 at Boho Yoga. Okay, and do you know the address? Yes, 828 Southeast 1st Street here okay. in McMinnville. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking about reading. We're not going to have time for that, but doggone okay. it. Oh, well, that's Thank all Thank you right. so much. Thank you very Can much it for quickly? having me. It yes, does, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. That was a half an hour. It was. We're off the air already. Uh, almost. Almost. Almost, okay. folks. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for watching again. Uh, again, I'm Stephen W. Long. Uh, easy to find my website. In fact, we'll get yours as well. Okay. Uh, StephenWLong.com. You can contact me, uh, and I'd love to hear from you. So, Tom, Tomas? Yes. Your, your website? Website is TomasGarza, all one word, okay. dot com. And I think, Caroline, do we have that? Maybe she can get it up there.
done? I don't know. You guys want to do one yeah, just with yourself? As long as they the think we're done, no, they got no, enough. No. They got no. enough. They got enough. Probably. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Let's go have. Let's go to lunch. I'm, cool. a, I'm <laughs> hungry. Yeah. Yeah, I can use a bite too.